Corporal Punishment, Where and Why This Form of Discipline Still Exists Today, a presentation by Chu Lee, Jacqueline Pettengill, and Kelly Rauch. Definition, a punishment intended to cause physical pain on a person. It is most often used where there is a substantial disparity of power between punisher and punished. Types of corporal punishment. Spanking consists of striking the buttocks with either an open hand or various implements, including a cane, belt, strap, various types of whips, a switch, or other forms of a rod or a paddle. Most commonly used form of corporal punishment consisting of one or more sharp smacks. Birching corporal punishment with a birch rod, which is a bundle of leafless twigs bound together. This is typically applied to the recipient's bare buttocks, although occasionally to the back and or the shoulders. Caning. Physical punishment consisted of a number of hits with a wooden cane, generally applied to the bare or clad buttocks, shoulders, hands, palm, rarely knuckles, or even the soles of the feet. Paddle. Usually wooden instrument with a long, flat face and narrow neck, so called because it is roughly shaped like the piece of sports equipment, but existing in more varied sizes and dimensions, used to administer a spanking to the buttocks. In the year 1783, Poland was the first to outlaw the practice of corporal punishment within schools. In 1986, the UK banned corporal punishment in funded schools. 1999, the UK banned this punishment in public and private schools in England and Wales. Year 2000, 27 states in the United States banned corporal punishment in their school systems. Year 2003, Northern Ireland banned corporal punishment. Year 2008, 120 countries had prohibited corporal punishment within their schools. 2015, most developed countries have abandoned the process with the exception of some parts of the U.S., some Australian states, Singapore, Africa, and Asia. Research shows that beating your child as a punishment was recommended as early as 10th century B.C. in the Book of Proverbs. Present in classical civilizations like Greece, Rome, and Egypt for both judicial and educational discipline. As early as the 11th century, St. Anselm, Archbishop of Canterbury, was speaking out against what he saw as the excessive use of corporal punishment in the treatment of children. During the 18th century, the concept of corporal punishment was challenged by some philosophers and legal reformers that believed that the purpose of punishment should be reformation, not retribution. In Europe and North America during the 19th century, we start to see a reduction of acceptance of corporal punishment encouraged by scandals involving individuals seriously hurt during the act of enforcement. The Death of Reginald Cancellor 1860 legal case in Eastbourne, England concerning the death of 15-year-old Reginald Cancellor at the hands of his teacher, Thomas Hopley. Hopley used corporal punishment with the declared intention of overcoming what he described as stubbornness by Kanzler, but instead beat the boy to death. Kanzler's brother requested an autopsy, and as a result, Hopley was arrested and charged with manslaughter and found guilty at trial and sentenced to four years in prison. The Victorian press intensely covered the trial and as a result inspired massive debate over the use of corporal punishment in schools and the case became an important legal precedent in the United Kingdom for discussions of corporal punishment in schools and reasonable limits on discipline. Court Cases In 1975, Baker v. Owen Court established guidelines for administering corporal punishment, determining that students must be warned in advance. Other forms of behavioral modification must be tried. Only reasonable force can be used. Parents must be notified, and an adult must be present. In 1977, the case of Ingram v. Wright ruled that Eighth Amendment clause to the Constitution prohibiting cruel and unusual punishment did not apply to school students and that teachers could punish without parental permission. School spanking remains lawful in 19 states in America over the opposition of 80% of American parents, American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, the National Educational Association, American Civil Liberties Union, the Human Rights Watch, the UN Committee of the Rights of the Child, and many others. Corporal punish is not a controversy, debate, or discussion, but instead a continuing and detrimental failure of the American-style democracy. 
so now that we know a little bit more about what corporal punishment is and where it is legal and illegal in the world and the United States, let's take a closer look at those who are in favor of corporal punishment and the places where it's currently used. In looking explicitly at the United States, we see that corporal punishment is allowed in many states to this day. And this map shows us some of the states where corporal punishment is used in 15% or more of schools. So you'll see that Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama each practice corporal punishment in over 50% of their schools. At the bottom of the spectrum, you have Texas and Georgia with 16 and 15% respectively. And it's safe to say that other states that allow corporal punishment do so at a rate of less than 15% of their schools. In places where it is still used, there is a rationale for corporal punishment. Oftentimes it's based in religious belief systems and the belief that adults have a duty to punish misbehavior and to assure that children are in line. There's also a disciplinary philosophy, which means that punishment builds character and is necessary for development of a child's conscience and respect for authority. And finally, there is a belief that the needs and rights of teachers maintain that corporal punishment is essential in their ability to control and create order in their classrooms. In addition to a rationale, there is also believed to be a positive side to corporal punishment. In some cases, people believe it is the most appropriate discipline for willful children. As LaShawn Williams of Sitter Circle, which is a group of independent child care providers states, some children just like to push the limits. There's also a belief that it helps children to understand clear boundaries and motivates them to behave better. L. Nicole Williams supports this in her article Eight Reasons to Spank Your Kids by saying that today's disrespectful youth have shown what happens when necessary spanking is foregone. And out of the mouth of a student herself, Allison Collins claims that, and my dad was like, just paddle her, because down here in the mountains, we do it the old school way. This shows that students often choose corporal punishment over other methods of behavioral modification, because that's what they know. So looking at corporal punishment in the classroom setting, we have to look at it four ways. From the viewpoint of the parent, the teacher, the administrator, as well as the student. When looking at corporal punishment from a parent's perspective, I have found that parents often say things like, it shows love and interest in the well-being of our children. We use it as a teaching tool to demonstrate self-control and self-restraint. We're able to demonstrate to our kids the standards to live by. It teaches them strength in the face of obstacles, and to be feared is to be respected. A teacher's perspective of corporal punishment will, out of necessity, take on the needs of a classroom over an individual. In this way, corporal punishment sets a tone for control and respect, allows teachers to keep better control of classrooms, and provides a mean to discipline that is swift and does not interfere with overall class goals or other students. An administrator's view on corporal punishment will be very much like that of a teacher's, except on a much larger scale. So in this case, corporal punishment assures that schools are focused on performance and dealing with behavioral issues swiftly, decreases the amount of time students spend out of the learning environment, and thereby helps schools meet higher measurements on test scores, graduation rates, and in-class days per year. Finally, for students, there are also positive aspects of corporal punishment, such as it allows students to not miss class and assignments by avoiding detention and suspension. It is a quick reparation for errors in behavior, which allows them to receive their punishment and move on. It is a form of punishment at school rather than at home. And there is a deep seated belief among many students that this is how we do it in this area. And this is what we expect if we step out of line. No, let's stop corporal punishment in school. Corporal punishment has no merit. Around the world, as shown globally on the map to the right, 
The majority of the war has banned or limited the use of corporal punishment as means of disciplining students. Here in the United States, there are a few states that still allow it. The chart on the left shows the highest punishment among students in the states, with Texas being the highest. This is no discipline. This is abuse. Corporal punishment is ineffective. From the time of its conception, there is no evidence proving the effectiveness of such horrific practice. Hitting, demoralizing, spanking, or criminal acts not involved with education in any shape or form. In fact, we just have shown that using corporal punishment does more damages than good. As Alien Key points out, corporal punishment is as humiliating for him who gives it as for him who receives it. It is ineffective, besides, neither shame nor physical pain have any other effect than a hardened one. The list of some of the disadvantages of corporal punishment are giving harms to students' physical and mental health, improper demonstration, not willing to investigate into the real causes of students' proper behaviors, giving rise to resistance, having negative influence on students' learning atmosphere. Corporal punishment is detrimental. The effects of physical and verbal abuses are long term. No parent should ever need to fear for the safety of their child or be concerned with the school violating their child's rights. Teachers should not be given the right to hit over and over again. Such repetition can lead to harder applied force and will become natural over a certain period. Administrators act like police rather than mentors. Administrators cannot be allowed to control and bear their responsibility to teach, care, and prevent where it's most needed in school. The effects on students is damaging. Corporal punishment impedes students' cognitive developments and it injects fear and authority. Students will suffer from anxiety, social withdrawal, and depression. As depicted by the picture on the left, we can learn a great deal about corporal punishment. We must love what we do and care for the safety of all, students and faculties. Although there are districts that still allow corporal punishment, Fresno Unified School District does not support or practice any type or form of corporal punishment. Fresno Unified School District policy, Code of Conduct, states that corporal punishment should not be used as a disciplinary measure against any student. Corporal punishment includes the willful infliction of physical pain on students. Corporal punishment has not been in practice since 1986. Since corporal punishment, Fresno Unified School District has moved to disciplining students with zero tolerance. Zero tolerance is limited, but not most, to the use of profanity, verbal threats, or any acts of violence while not tolerate on school grounds or at school events. It is the practice of suspension and expulsion for intolerable behaviors, misconducts, possession of a controlled substance, or weapons. But Zero tolerance policy have led to a larger numbers of youth being pushed out, suspended, or expelled with no evidence of positive impact on school. Therefore, as a unified school district is seeking another alternative. Today, Fresno Unified School District embarks on a new path in support of restorative justice. Fresno Unified School Board voted to implement restorative justice on May 8, 2013. Restorative justice is the practice to reduce suspension, expulsion, and disciplinary referrals by focusing on repairing harm, restoring relationship, and helping students accountable for their actions. Restorative justice is a disciplinary tool which is more favorable 